Uh, well, the question is um, whether or not you would need to have a proof that you had your jab to get on a train. No, of course not. Wouldn't that be absurd? Well, you have to have proof of your jab. Uh, we're believing in terms of if you're traveling to the EU or proof of a negative test or an antibody test of some sort to get to another country because we don't have any say of what other countries going to require to get us to uh, let us uh, get into their countries. And to a certain extent, you can argue, well, it's up to them what they want to do to keep their population safe. In the UK, though, we know that the government has been pushing for us to have vaccine passports. Sports, we're told to keep us safe uh, so that uh, we can uh, um, uh, prove our vaccine status to get into, say, a sports event, a big concert. There was a talk about it uh, happening for pubs and restaurants. We're told that's on the back burner, but the question is, is it? Now, it means developments in the last couple of days regarding the vaccine passport and the NHS app. Let's talk about this all now with Silky Carlo, who's director of Big Brother Watch. Good morning to you, Silky. Good morning. Um, I am the furthest person you'll ever get from a conspiracy theorist. It is always, in my mind, a cock up, not a conspiracy. And when people say, oh, there's some big plan to turn us into China and they're going to watch everything that we do. I sort of roll my eyes and think, yeah, yeah, put the foil tin hat on. There are some developments in the last couple of days that are incredibly worrying for me. And I think we should be worrying a lot, a lot of my listeners as well. Let's just go back to the beginning here. There was talk about having a vaccine passport for us to be using domestically. And then there was talk about having a vaccine passport, a way of proving your vaccine status to be able to travel abroad. I, I don't have an issue with that second one. Uh, you download the NHS app. It's going to show you've had your vaccines. Not so much an issue. I'd rather have it on a piece of paper, frankly. Uh, but, you know, I can understand that. A lot of people saying they wouldn't have it for domestic use. The government said, oh, these are separate things. Don't worry. The development in the last couple of days tells us that's not the case. What's happened? Well, um, I completely share your concern and worry about this. I'm extremely worried about it. Um, and if the question is, is there a big plan for COVID passes? Yes, there absolutely is. I mean, it's just irrefutable now. And I actually think it's been in place for many, many, many months. Um, and the government has been barefaced lying about it. And this is a really... Uh, this is a this is a point that cannot be escaped. You know, we have ministers on record saying um, last year, at the end of last year in November, there are absolutely no plans for vaccine passports. Um, it's not going to happen. And at that time, they were actually signing contracts yeah. for tech companies to develop them. Multi-million pound contracts. Yeah. Absolutely. And where we are today is that uh, we're still in this kind of twilight zone where the government is pretending that they are having a review, they're thinking about it very seriously, Michael Gove is scratching his head. And uh, meanwhile, the COVID uh, vaccine status function has been put onto the general NHS app. And if you read the privacy notice, it says, this data will be useful for further aspects of unlocking as they arise, e.g. attendance at domestic events. Mm -hmm. This is a matter of constitutional significance. We have never had IDs in Britain. We don't have internal passports. We don't want internal health passports. Um, the Conservative government knows that a lot of their own backbenchers are up in arms about this. In fact, there's well over the, the amount needed to uh, execute a rebellion if, if needed. And, and also, uh, of course, La the Labour Party has, uh, I mean, they, 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 they criticised it, but then sat on the fence. But if the Labour Party joined them, then that would be defeated. Can I just clarify, though, what's happened again? So the vaccine passport, again, my mum downloaded it, ready to go on holiday. Yes, one of those naughty amber list people. Oh, isn't she terrible? Um, after her double jab um, to prove that she's got her double vaccine uh, and so she can get into to France. Um, but now it's been updated and these apps, most people just click on, yeah, it just update automatically. It's updated to to add a lot of other things. Now, um, special category data has been added. Uh, so information relating to the individual's physical or mental health condition, not not just related to vaccinations, information relating to the family. This is what's written on the app. I'm not making this stuff up. Information relating to the family of the individual and the individual's lifestyle and social circumstances is on the app. Information which relates to the ethnic origin of the individual. Information relating to the genetic biometric details where processed to uniquely identify an individual and criminal convictions or alleged criminal behaviour. What the hell has any of that got to do with proving whether you've had two jabs or not? It's, it's so alarming. It's so disturbing. Um, I mean, I'm still actually in somewhat uh, a level of, of, of disbelief about this. And we're trying to check this out uh, with our with our legal team because it's not clear uh, 
where that data is coming from. Are, are they just using boilerplate language on, on this privacy notice? I don't know, but that's the problem. I mean, this is all being done by the back door with very little transparency. And it's really alarming. Just, if they really are going to be collecting that kind of data, then I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think we've just got our head in our hands. But the thing is, also this app, it is a direct link into your medical records yeah. and you are being all, expected all of your it. medical records not not just Absolutely. your vaccine status yeah so there is a lot of sensitive data at stake here that we are apparently now by the back door in a uh, backroom decision that has not been subjected to any kind of democratic process at all we're going to be expected to show this uh, it, at civilian checkpoints internally within our own country um uh, i guess starting at uh, concerts and larger events but that's really the starting point i mean how long is it before this becomes schools colleges universities and all the rest of it yeah. I, I don't think it's just going to be places that people are choosing to go um because where would the where would the logic be yeah. um, why, why, why do they think why do they think that we need this this is the bit I, i've always argued if you know if it was just about the vaccines if the vaccines work then we don't need it because we'll have the herd immunity if the vaccines don't work there's no use to it this isn't sci-fi stuff this isn't sort of you know stuff out you know minority report or anything we are talking about something that's already happened in china in China, I mean, we've taken far too many lessons from China in the recent years, in my view, anyway. But this is in China. People are required to have these these apps on their phones. You can't do anything, and you get social credit. So if you're a good person, you do the right thing. You you get more freedoms. Um, they follow everything that people do, everything they spend, the the taxes, every single thing that they do is followed by the government and and controlled. This is unbelievably dangerous territory to go down. Yeah, there's um, an interesting statement by um, the health minister in the Lords, Lord Bethel, who said that the app is part of an ambitious plan to change our relationship to our medical records. What does that mean? We also know that this is a government that's got an agenda for digital ID and there's a digital ID framework being drawn up at the moment. Um, they're supportive of facial recognition technologies. I mean, there are a lot of, <laughs> if you're looking for minority report or China style policies, um, wow, we've got an awful lot of them. I think the, um, the, the government's been learning a lot from China. You know, Matt Hancock is someone who, um, says that he he loves technology I, I don't think he's got a very good antenna for um ethics and uh perhaps good use of technology um i think there is a very lazy way of thinking that anything that's on an app anything that uses big data is a good thing it's yeah. innovative and sure if you start seeing citizenry as cattle then why wouldn't you want them to have digital ids and force them to show their passes everywhere that they yeah. go that's not the way that most british people want to live but, but and again crucially it completely changed our relationship with the government you know, they are there to serve us that's the way round it is. They they are on our payroll, uh, not the other way round. Um, Silky Carlo, director of the Big Brother Watch, thank you very much. I know we're going to be talking more about this on tomorrow's show as well.